Good day, everyone. It's uh, it's great to uh, be with you here today to chat about this this uh, topic. Some of you may have joined these these kinds of uh, uh, presentations that we've done before, uh, and we keep adding to it. So this is great. Uh, some of them might be new to you, and some of the topics may be do may be new as well. So uh, please put those questions in that that uh, that box, as uh, Cheryl mentioned, and we'll get through as many of them as we can. So, you know, we know there has to be a new approach to higher education. It is absolutely a new world these days. And as many of these higher ed places or, or even K through 12 schools for that matter uh, are trying to adapt, they have to add to or upgrade any kind of teaching spaces to provide a better quality streaming and distance learning uh, capabilities. Because you really gotta allow students to participate not only in class, but they have to be socially distanced in that class, right? But they also are experiencing the hybrid life now, right? Where everyone's connecting also via video conference. Some of these spaces, some I, you know, I hear a classroom can only have so many students in it. So A days, it's half this half and B days, it's the other half, so on and so forth. And all these can be real challenging. So today, hopefully we can answer some of those questions as we discuss these following topics. First of all, of course, how this high quality audio can actually enhance the student experience. Frankly, it might be worth mentioning CARES Act again, right? Um, it, I'm sure everyone is familiar with that. If you're not, uh, this is a big deal. It's a way to get some funding and it's uh, we're through phase two now, uh, but also considerations that you need to take when you're designing or working with a designer to implement these AV systems, not only for sound reinforcement, but again, now for distance learning, lecture capture, and this quote unquote hybrid life that uh, we're living in higher ed. And all this should be done with an eye towards actually enhancing your audio experience while maintaining these social distance regulations. There's some really cool um, things that we can do nowadays uh, th that are a little easier to do to actually enhance and uh, encourage participation in classrooms. So regarding your investment, we know that we have to invest in technology that helps adapt to this new world. The smaller group of students in, in space, larger rooms or lecture halls, for example, but that investment should be very focused. Uh, we need to make sure that everyone can not only be heard and questions can be asked, but it's, but it's more interactive. The whole thing should be, be engaging, right? Um, and, and things like even sharing documents are very important. All this should be done seamlessly. And so while you're preparing for this distance learning and social distancing in the classroom, uh, there's a handful of things that, uh, that we need to think about or be aware of. Uh, so for instance, um, is this a one-to-many type application, meaning uh, a one-way communication where a professor or a teacher speaks and there's not really a lot of engagement necessarily needed? Or is it that hybrid environment that needs complete engagement where any student can interact and all students need to be able to be heard and uh, speak clearly, right, through the systems? That AV system needs to be capable of handling that. Those audio needs need to be tailored specifically to this, this issue with social distancing as well. Uh, so the classrooms we know are flexible these days. It's even the classroom itself has to be set up differently. And there's new uh, implementations of actually something that's been done for a long time, which is voice lift technology. We're going to discuss a little bit about how that can work and frankly, how new technology makes it even more uh, accessible, so to speak, uh, to work well. But first, one of these questions always comes up. And it's kind of a fun sidetrack here. Well, how do we clean our microphones? Many of these classrooms have uh, wireless systems already there in place where uh, the teachers uh, need to be able to clean the microphones or somebody else comes in and cleans it. Uh, we actually have a site dedicated to cleaning. And this is great for all the tech folks out there that need to know what to do. Um, you know. It, there are definitely things you don't want to do. Uh, applying chemicals that are harsh to, to devices can actually, you know, lessen their life or completely disable some of them. So if you go to our website, and this is the U.S. Uh, website, by the way, sure.com slash en-us slash support 
slash mic cleaning. We got lots of videos and such there. You could also just go to our website, just get there and type in the search box mic cleaning, and it should take you to uh, our page on mic cleaning. Lots of different topics there. But moving on. So let's talk a little bit about this CARES Act thing, and just real quick so we all have a kind of a basis. This really was meant to enhance learning experiences. This is a funding that's provided to support uh, offers the change of improved audio clarity. And frankly, that audio clarity is virtual for college, vital for colleges and universities. And using the correct flexible devices can really enable students and teachers to collaborate no matter where they're located. And Sure offers a complete portfolio that enables all of this to happen. Um, so with the CARES Act money, this really is aimed directly towards, again, enabling more classroom uh, interaction through providing more options for students to access the learning experience. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's have a quick look at um, some of the room examples. We've got lots of these room examples here. So. As we go through these, I'd love if, if you guys take notes or think about things uh, because there's going to be lots of different examples and you may have questions about one example or another and, and we can get to those again at the end uh, and make sure we've covered everything or, or answered any questions that we, qu we can. So first off, this is a very standard type of uh, learning space here, a very large learning space. And typically these things in the past have been dealt with by putting a wireless system in where the professor can walk the room anywhere they want and they can be heard throughout that space. These uh, systems include things like our Axient digital wireless platform or ULXD, uh, and there's other versions available uh, that even come down lower and lower in cost. But there's some advantages to using the wireless system. First of all, that microphone is right on the presenter or the professor or the teacher. That's great because now we have better signal to noise uh, ratio. In other words, the microphone hears more of what the talker is saying and less of all the noise in the room. This is the best of all worlds. If you can do this, this is really good. It's rejecting all the noise from everywhere else and the professor's being heard loud and clear, not only in the space, but also on the far end, whether it's being recorded for transmit later or being viewed uh, again from a, uh, a distance learning or a video conference system. Other advantages to these kind of systems, there's, there's a certain amount of our protection. Uh, there's low latency, uh, which is not a huge critical factor really to the higher ed market, but it does have low latency, even though it's a digital system. They can be encrypted so that, um, you know, other folks, if, if there are, uh, some type of private in, uh, uh, conversations going on, maybe at the higher levels, uh, the deans, the presidents of the school want to have a private conversation wirelessly. We can encrypt that signal so people sitting outside can't pick it off and listen into what's going on. Uh, also, these systems can be made to be Dante, uh, excuse me, they, they actually are made to be Dante enabled. If you're ULXD or Axiant Digital, you can put them right on your Dante network and route those audio flows anywhere you want them to go. Now, uh, a quick call out here to the top where we're showing uh, some lavalier microphones. Those are actually our twin plex microphones. Those came out, they're fairly new. Um, they are available in four different colors. Uh, they have great rejection of, of things like uh, water or whatnot, but they are our premier lavalier system now. And uh, we still have all the other ones available, maybe that you're used to using WL-185s or whatever your favorite is. We still all have that. But the advantage here is all the different colors, and they can be painted with an artistic paint pen. So uh, if you need this to match a certain skin tone, uh, you can do that. Uh, if you need it to match a certain... <laughs> ensemble, which is what we do in theater quite a bit, um, you could do that as well. Now, I, we called out Duraplex as well. Duraplex is actually even a newer addition to our line. Uh, that's like your all-terrain lavalier microphone. It, it utilizes a lot of the same technology that's in the high-end Twinplex, but it's waterproof and dustproof and uh, just a really high-end, uh, you know, like I said, all-terrain type of microphone. So uh, on with this description here. Now, these students aren't exactly socially distanced. Sorry about that. We, uh, this is a graphic that we created before COVID, 
But you'll get the idea here. When when the professor talks, like I said, you've got to use a couple loudspeakers that fill the auditorium uh, with sound. The problem is, what happens when students want to talk? Well, we could put a handheld mic up in place somewhere here, um, and those students could walk up to the microphone and talk. But uh, it's a little bit more of a challenge to deploy this kind of thing uh, with just a wireless system. Unless, of course, you want to give everybody a wireless microphone, which is totally possible. We have that version coming up shortly. Here's another option, though, in these larger spaces. You could consider using our ceiling array microphone, the MXA 910. This is really the premium array microphone uh, on the market. And the, the advantages here, again, is that your professor can move all about and not have to worry about uh, anything. It's, it's hands-free. I don't have a microphone now to clean or to worry about. Where does that thing go? Did it get batteries? Did it get charged? Uh, so the ceiling array solution offers several benefits um, and including the functionality of voice lift technology. So voice lift is a really uh, cool thing to add uh, very quickly. It requires uh, extra design thought. And here's why. Here's one reason why. If this is my coverage, my pickup coverage, I'm picking up the professor. He's walking back and forth uh, through the space. That's great. Touch-free, hands-free, wireless, so to speak, whatever you want to call it. The problem is if I'm trying to play that audio back into the space through the existing loudspeakers or through just the left and right metal loudspeakers, if you've done audio before, you might know we're setting up a recipe for potential disaster here. I'm pointing microphone lobes towards the loudspeakers. Now, this will create a fun little thing that we call feedback loop, uh, where the microphone hears what's coming out of the loudspeaker and plays it back through the loudspeaker, which picks up in the microphone, the back through the loudspeaker, back and forth, back and forth. You get the idea. This is not a good thing. And uh, so... Better yet, to even enhance this a little further, uh, what we do is we, we do a distributed style loudspeaker system here. And the distributed style loudspeaker system will allow us to pick up audio, for instance, from this front space, and play a little bit of it through some of these ceiling speakers here, but even more back through these loudspeakers. And then when a student talks, now, I snuck something in on here. We have added 910s in. We no longer have just one 910, but there's actually several of them. Watch here. As I change, there's a 910 back here as well. And when this section talks, their voice is reproduced into these spaces loudly. We can kind of see that with this, this heat map, as some call it. When the student talks on the other side, audio is not coming out of the speakers directly around them. It, it, it feathers in and comes out the loudspeakers in other spaces. So altogether, that looks something like this. We've got five MXA 910s deployed here. There's not, uh, if you're familiar with the MXA 910 real quickly, you'll know that the 910 has the ability to deploy eight lobes. Notice we don't have any single one of them have eight lobes. They're actually distributed through the rooms, just like the loudspeakers. This allows for a much more natural reproduction of the voice. Uh, there's kind of equidistant spacing between the microphone and any given talker, so it's very smooth. The far end hears everyone loud and clear uh, when they're listening in. A recording hears everyone loud and clear. But again, we get that benefit of, of being able to also zone the loudspeakers. This is critical. I want to restate this once again. These loudspeakers all have their, amp their own amplifier channels. And I think I forgot to mention this, but these little purple dots re uh, represent a loudspeaker. Uh, so every loudspeaker in this scenario would have its own amplifier feed, or you could consider using um, a self-powered PoE type loudspeaker. We happen to make one. It's new. There's a couple others out there on the market, but uh, it requires a zoning of your loudspeakers in order to make this work appropriately. Let's move on to another popular space, the lecture hall. And uh, we're showing a maybe a little more cost-effective uh, solution here. There comes some caveat with this. Uh, and so real quick, just to point out some of the things that we have here so we know what we're looking at. We have our MXA 710 
microphones that are shown in the ceiling at this point, hanging down from the ceiling. We've got a total of six of them we're showing here. This is just a graphical representation. You know, your space could be bigger, smaller, require more or less mics. Um, same thing with the loudspeakers. Of course, we see all these loudspeakers here. Those are our PoE loudspeakers. We have a processor here, the P300. We also have some wireless mics in this space, the ULXD system. Every, it, notice everything's connected up to a switch, so it's powered and controlled and audio. Everything's coming through that switch, simple to design and deploy. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I will point out that uh, this space could be done with uh, maybe two or three 910s in here. Uh, so it, it, it begs the question real quick, because maybe some of you are already wondering about this. What's the difference between our new MXA 710 linear array and the MXA 910 array that we have? Well, first of all, the MXA 910 is still the premium ceiling array. It was designed for the ceiling use. It creates lobes or, or pickup patterns that are essentially like a cone. And do you remember when I talked about wireless microphones, I said the great thing about having like a lavalier or a headset mic on a presenter is that there's a greater signal to noise ratio. The, the, it, the microphone hears the talker better then it hears all the other ambient stuff in the room. Well, the MXA910 works so well as a ceiling microphone array because of those very cone-shaped uh, pickup zones, and everything outside of that cone is being rejected. It's not completely goes away, but it's very much attenuated way down. The 710 has a different type of pickup pattern. It's called a toroid, and uh, we can talk about that towards the end if you wish. But the toroid picks up more ambient sound. It's kind of like a half you know, bagel or half donut when you mount it to the ceiling. So it's picking up a lot more of the room, a lot more of the space. Therefore, there's a lot more ambient information coming in. Uh, so you cannot assume that one MXA710 replaces an MXA910 when in the ceiling position. But... The 710 has a lot of other advantages that we're going to see in other future uh, drawings, which include mounting it on the wall or mounting it on a table surface uh, in the front of a podium. There's a lot of other options for the 710, so it's very versatile. You give up some of that extra rejection, and as we're showing here in this lecture hall, uh, maybe it requires six of them where maybe we could do this with only three MXA 910s, fewer microphones if we're doing the 910. So moving on, uh, this space works great. It sounds great. We set the whole thing up with our uh, free software called Designer. And um, with that P300 processor there, by the way, uh, that has USB connection to your Nook, your, your in-room PC, or even if it's a BYOD type of thing where they bring their own laptop, um, USB simple connectivity connects you to the room with, with good quality audio. What about a large classroom? Here's a larger space. We're showing it here with a couple of uh, 910s. Again, everything, uh, you'll, you'll start to notice this if you haven't before. Sure is very focused on a single network connection per device that provides for control, Dante digital audio, and of course, <clears throat> powering. So we're showing again our PoE switch that powers not only our two MXA910 microphones, but that P300 digital signal processor, which uh, deals with all the AEC noise reduction, all that kind of stuff that we need. And it also allows for our USB connection to, um, you know, to our, our in-room soft codec, whether it's Zoom or Teams or whatever you might be using. Now, note that that P300 also has the ability for analog interface. So if you do have hard hardware type codecs, um, like a Polycom or a Cisco, something or another, you still can use this processor and interface to those devices. Uh, we're showing that this could be 710 in here as well. Uh, 710 is popular for another reason. And this drawing kind of illustrates that. Notice all these lights are very linear. We see more and more linear type ceilings um, and, and not so much drop tile type ceilings anymore. And so the 910, while it's still a premium product, it's square and sometimes people just like the look of the 710 better. Uh, so they'll put that in even though, you know, again, I'll just point it out. If I want a similar acoustic experience as the 910, I'm gonna need more MXA 710s. 
to get close to that. I need the 710 closer to the talkers than what the 910, uh, the 910 could be a little further away. Here's another example here with this larger classroom. Uh, this is kind of a very popular one again. We have several ceiling speakers. We have our MXA 710s hanging uh, from the ceiling. And then our pre uh, presenter is going to use an SLXD in this case. Uh, this is a very popular wireless system for uh, higher ed, especially very cost effective. It is a digital system. Um, and it, it, it frankly is one of the most commonly used. Now, it does not have... Uh, um, Dante digital audio, but we can still get that into our system via either the analog inputs here or uh, through other input devices. We have some ANI boxes uh, that allow us to get uh, analog audio into a digital world. So uh, again, this whole thing is put together with designer and it's very simple and easy to deploy. You may have noticed some of these systems, by the way, are showing a server, a little icon on it. Just FYI, uh, we are working on a, um, a system API that allows uh, you to monitor and control all of your sewer systems, you know, campus wide or even worldwide uh, and get information back, uh, do things like firmware updates, monitor status of devices, all that kind of thing. Batteries, even battery life, it'll tell you battery life. So that's what this extra device is that you'll see floating in some of these uh, drawings is that more to come on that, but definitely able to, to uh, monitor and control your, your devices from one central place. Now, I mentioned earlier that, uh, you know, wireless systems, while they have been a great addition and they really are the best thing, in the COVID era, sometimes we're not too excited about touching things or wearing things. That, who knows how many other instructors have? Did it get cleaned? Did the batteries get replaced, et cetera, et cetera? So, we could do something like this. While we have some MXA 710s over the, uh, the classroom area, we can put one up front as well to have a completely hands-free, uh, touch-free use for a presenter. Uh, and the other kind of neat thing here, we don't even have this in our presentation, um, but we now build a simple mute button. And guess what? It's just like every other Shure device. It plugs into the switch. And it's just a touch, well, here we go. It's a touch device, a uh, touch capacitive device, but you could mute the classroom, for instance. You could mute these other 710s when there's a presentation going on and, then, and the professor could decide, hey, I want to unmute those mics. They could touch the mute button and everything went unmute uh, in the microphones. So that could be done anywhere along the way, any of the rooms that we've talked about thus far. And it could become even more complex uh, with the addition of a control system if you wished. But speaking of, adding things on all of these spaces there's kind of one at least one component missing we've talked about the audio it's worth giving a quick mission mention that we actually distribute hudley now so uh even these larger spaces that's kind of where hudley is aiming for i have been to many universities that use this the standard hudley iq camera even in their larger spaces and they love it they think it's great but if you want to step up the game a little bit and have a higher end Hudley, uh, there's the L1 that's available that you could put in those classrooms as well. Of course, that would connect to your soft codec PC, your Nook, whatever's running your Zoom or Teams or whatnot, the same PC that your P300 would connect to to get the audio connected there. Um, so uh, moving on here to the smaller spaces, a standard classroom, again, this is kind of an interesting hybrid type of situation. A couple of loudspeakers, four loudspeakers here. We do have, look, here's a wall-mounted 710 now. And it's mounted vertically. Uh, so now with one lobe, we can pick up this entire room. The only challenge is, is our professor, when he or she is speaking to the classroom, they are their heads are towards the back of the microphone, right? So we would probably want to have a, micro, a wireless mic here for that professor to use. Um, and then this deals with the, the fact that, you know, the, the microphone's mounted on the wall and they're not speaking towards the wall. How about a medium sized room, horseshoe type configuration? This can be done a number of different ways as well. We're showing it here with a couple of 910s. You easily could probably get this done with a single 910 as well. We're showing to, this is best practices. Um, you know, the sales department likes to sell more than, 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 uh, than, than needed. 
Uh, now I'm going to get my hand smacked, sorry. Uh, but you could easily get get away with one nine ten here, or probably two seven tens. And we do make the seven ten in a two foot version and in a four foot version. Uh, but it would probably require two seven tens or one nine ten at a minimum. How about? Let's see here. Here we go. Another even smaller classroom. Here's a couple of seven tens, couple loudspeakers. Here's that P three hundred. Everything is simple. It works. By the way, the loudspeakers, I didn't mention this. Our loudspeakers, they come voiced for voice, uh, speech intelligibility. So you do not have to spend a lot of time trying to make these, sound, uh, these things sound really good. They just kind of come out of the box sounding amazing for voice intelligibility. Now, if you want to play music through them, that's fine. You can do that and you can have a different EQ for music. But we wanted to be very pointed when we release the loudspeakers that as much as possible, they need to come out of the box and sound better than anything else out there for conferencing purposes, which means voice intelligibility. A smaller space. So what we're seeing here is our MXA 310 table array microphone. Uh, these are great. The, the 310s can be made to have different lobes deployed as well or pick up patterns, depending upon what size table or how many participants are at that table. Um, they can connect up to our P300 as shown here. Again, illustrating one wire to each device, power, audio, and control. All happens there. And then our USB connectivity. Now, we're also showing here another thing that you could use. Uh, this is in Telemix Room. Some of you may know that we actually released a software, um, frankly, first to the industry that, that, uh, that I know about, a, an AV-specific processing audio software that installs right on whatever you're using for your Zoom uh, or, or Teams uh, or WebEx, whatever your soft codec PC is. So again, the advantage here is that no longer do I need the P300. That piece of hardware is gone. Basically, we take those algorithms, wrap them up into a piece of software that gets installed and deployed on that same asset that already exists inside that room, that Nook or that PC. Um, and all the processing is being done here, meaning AEC, noise reduction, uh, auto mixing, all of that stuff is happening here on board that Intellimix Room PC. So, you know, when you consider uh, things like loudspeaker amplifiers and um, digital signal processors in a day and age where there's not a lot of space left here, even in the smaller spaces, right? Where are you going to put a rack with an amplifier? and a DSP processor, or even if it's smaller, how much space do you have left behind that display to stick everything? Well, if as long as there's a switch, you can have a complete sure solution as this is showing. And even in the smaller huddle rooms, I've, I've got my loudspeaker here, single loudspeaker. I have an MXA310 table array here. I've got my uh, in processing via Intellimix room that is installed on my Zoom rooms or Teams rooms uh, or whatever my soft codec PC is there. I have my uh, Hudley IQ camera hooked up via USB there. I'm coming HDMI out to feed the display. I'm done. It's quick, it's simple, it's easy. And if you use Designer, our, our software to set everything up, you actually get from uh, installation to operation very quickly. Our Designer software helps to auto-optimize all of these devices to work together as flawlessly as they can, leaving you with minor adjustments at the end instead of trying to figure out how to make all this stuff work right from the beginning. Now, there's some other types of spaces that we haven't covered yet. I alluded to a little bit earlier, but uh, one type is be like a gymnasium or cafeteria or a multi-purpose room. And these are becoming, you know, more and more used because we need larger spaces to host these students in to keep them social distanced. And you could consider a system like our MXCW system. Uh, this is a complete wireless system that's an all-in-one. What do I mean by all-in-one? There's a loudspeaker on board the conference unit. There's a microphone on board the conference unit. There's even a touch screen there that allows for some interaction. Um, there is an access point, much like you would experience with a, a wireless computer system and you have an access point to connect to to get internet. This 
allows all of these units to connect to to share audio between all the devices. Up to 128 different units can be connected to a single access point. They are battery operated, so we have charging stations. This allows you to set up a complete conference system without the need of any other devices. You, you don't have to install loudspeakers, you know, you don't have to install all this other stuff to make it work, wires for microphones, etc. You just simply grab as many of, of the conference units as you need, which is the MXW640. And even this access point, while we're showing it mounted on the wall, this, there's no reason why this can't be on a cart or even installed on a, on a pole that's on a cart, a push cart. We've seen that before. So even that access point can be portable as well and move from room to room and set up quickly. Now, the advantage here, I've talked a little bit about Dante Digital Audio. This access point talks Dante. Again, one wire network for PoE power, Dante Digital Audio and control all over one wire, one switch. I can connect up a P300 here if I wanted to, to connect to my Zoom rooms or Teams rooms. I could connect it up to my Intellimix room uh, software PC, that Nook, right, that's hosting that soft codec. So very flexible system here, and it's great because, uh, again, moving from room to room or place to place, we see a lot of interest in this, frankly, from, again, from like the dean's office or the president's office, where they have multiple different meeting spaces. They need to be able to social distance, yet hear each other easily, and even conference in other folks. How about a completely mobile system? I know a lot of these spaces uh, say, gosh, we have, we have a bunch of different spaces. We don't have the budget to put conferencing in every single space. But what if we could build a mobile cart that we could just move from room to room as needed? Absolutely. The great thing about the MXA710 is there's a Visa style mount on the back mounting pattern, and there's standard off the shelf mounting uh, options for the displays themselves where you can connect up the MXA 710. Uh, and many times these cases, they're using the, the speakers that are in the display. Uh, so that saves some money. There's our Hudley camera uh, on, on board there. And then also all the processing is being done via our, our Intellimix room, that software that's installed right on the same PC that's hosting your soft codec. So very simple, easy solution that's completely portable, moving from room to room that allows for higher uh, quality video conferencing. But it's important to take this, uh, this topic all the way home, right? Uh, many of our, our folks, um, uh, the higher ed teachers and such, started out just using microphones around the computer and soon realized that uh, that's not so great. Uh, we actually went to work right away uh, developing the MV5C. That's this personal conferencing microphone here. Um, it may look familiar to some of you that, that know about our USB style personal microphones. Um, the history of those is that we had built these USB microphones for a, a lot of different uses, including, uh, but mainly recording for uh, like, you know, tracking in your house if you wanted to be a musician and, and that kind of thing, or maybe podcasting. But there were a couple of things that we knew we could enhance to make it perfect for the personal conference uh, solution. So this MV5C is totally plug and play. It has a speech enhancement mode. It, it does have that studio quality audio and it's compatible with Mac or Windows, but it also has some other cool things. Um, you, you, it, it will automatically default to your computer's built-in audio output. So there's no more fumbling around or trying to help uh, you know, a, a uh, a, a professor or somebody figure out how to get their settings in their computer correct to use this uh, to work. Um, it's compatible with third-party software conferencing platforms as well. So uh, having high quality audio even at home is really super important. So I kind of rushed through a lot of that. I want to make sure we had time for questions at the end. But before we get there, uh, in case you're wondering about any of this stuff, you need to speak to somebody about something uh, directly. You can scan the QR code there on the left. Uh, we'd be happy to, to interact with you there. The one on the right signs you up for our newsletter. Uh, that's another great place to go. We don't, we, we try not to spam you too much, uh, only provide you with quality information as it comes in. So I think Cheryl, with that, uh, we're ready for questions now. 
Sorry, had to unmute myself. Thanks so much, Chris. Lots of great information, and we have a couple of questions. Um, I'm just going to change our view here so that they can see our lovely faces, large and in charge. All right. All right. Uh, so here we go with questions. Um, the first question I have, um, when would you recommend the MXW system over Axiant or the ULX, et cetera? I know that MXW latency is an issue with recording if you're going directly to tape. That is a great question. Um, and so we'll start with the last point first. MXW does have more latency. It's only about 20 milliseconds, though, which is perfectly fine for spoken word. Uh, if I was to translate that into a distance, latency is, is, can be related directly to distance. That's a distance of about 20 feet. So if you've ever listened to somebody talk 20 feet away, which we all have, right? That's the experience. Uh, it's not good for performance, for singing into, but for speech reinforcements is great. MXW offers some really great options. It's, of course, rechargeability. You get all different types of microphone compatibility, meaning handheld, lavalier, boundary, uh, gooseneck style with docking stations for charging. Perhaps the biggest advantage to Microflex Wireless is that it's very small. It's, it, it's very uh, refined looking. Uh, it sits well at home in a lot of different places that need a higher end look. It operates uh, in what we call the decked band. And so it, it does its own frequency coordination. That's a really great feature about MXW as well, is you can just plug it in and it will figure out what frequencies to deal with. ULXD, QLXD, you know, Axiant, uh, those are all uh, great systems as well. Uh, those really can be used for performance, high quality audio. Um, they operate more often in the UHF band of spectrum, which is down a little bit more, uh, which is can be a little more crowded. It depends on where you are. It requires frequency coordination. You have to be aware of what you're doing there, even across your campus. You've got to be careful with that. Um, ULXD and QLXD also offer, in addition to handheld and body packs, also offer the boundary and gooseneck microphone options. So I would say, at the end of the day, consult with your local shore rep or market development person to figure out which one might be right for you. It might require going to the site and doing a scan just to make sure that the RF spectrum uh, is what it needs to be, depending upon how many units you want to deploy. Awesome. All right. Uh, next question. Can uh, MXA be connected to a Heritage DSP without much fuss? Really what I'm asking is, does the sound processing inside the MXA supplement the limitations of the older DSP? I imagine it would be limited with the mix minus to what the DSP can do. Yeah, um, so it, it, MX, first of all, MXA being a completely digital system, if you're interfacing it to an older DSP, you're probably gonna have to convert it to analog. And we do have products that can do that, convert that digital signal to analog to get it into the processor. You'll need to make sure your channel count is high enough. Um, the MXA has the ability to give you a completely auto-mixed, fully processed output on one channel, which is a huge advantage. But if you want to use voice lift, you're going to want to use all of the, the uh, channel outputs and process them individually. Because remember, we have to send this lobe to that zone over there. Uh, and we don't want to just mix all of them together and try to make it come out all the loudspeakers necessarily. You won't have a great recipe uh, there. So, so the answer, sorry, the, sh the shorter answer is yes, you can do that. But again, I would say check out support, call support, check in with your sure rep or somebody just to make sure that uh, we're, we're completing the design as best we can. And I'll just add, um, if you do want to get into touch with in touch with our support team, it's really easy to open up a ticket with them. Um, you can just go to shore.com slash contact and fill out the form there. Open up a ticket. We've got a great team of guys and gals that can answer questions all across the audio world. So um, shore.com slash contact to open a ticket with our support team. All right. Next question. Can you speak to any disadvantages of mounting XLR microphones and sending the signal to an audio interface or computer, uh, audio interface, then a computer? This is the most cost-effective solution we've explored at my school. Thank you. Yes. Um, it, it, there is a great advantage to that. And by the way, that uh, that is cost-effective, absolutely, as long as that XLR microphone is close to the talker. Uh, the challenge you're going to have with just a standard single XLR type of microphone 
uh, from anybody is that if you try to hang that thing in the middle of the room, uh, it's basically kind of an omnidirectional microphone. So it's going to pick up ambient noise all around you. Um, the, the processing is okay these days. It's getting better. But dealing with all of the mechanical and noise hissing and everything else in the room is challenging. And as your processor tries to get all that noise out, it affects how good the quality of audio is for your voice. That's the first challenge. The next challenge is because it's so far away, uh, you become a further away talker microphone. So for instance, the further I move away from my microphone, you start to know other things like my voice stripped down in quality and you're hearing more ambient sound uh, come in as well. So just to illustrate again, that's the way to do it, XLR, but get it right close to the talker and, and you're ready to go. Just a quick side personal question, since we're talking about that, um, don't know if it's relevant, but maybe would a shotgun microphone be your best case scenario if you do have some levity with sort of what kind of XLR microphone you're purchasing? That's a great question. It comes up quite a bit. The shotgun microphone um, works well to help reject uh, that ambient noise. So as a further away I get from the microphone, it, it, it's kind of like putting blinders on uh, yeah. and it's rejecting all that noise. Now, the challenge you have with the shotgun microphone is um, you need to understand how they work, the physics of it. Actually, it turns out the longer the tube is of that, of that uh, shotgun, that's called an interference tube, um, the more narrow the pickup pattern is. So the further away you get, the longer the tube of that microphone needs to become to reject all that stuff. Uh, so, and we have, we have heard several different instances of successful installations using shotgun microphones. The downside, again, is that you're usually only focused on a certain area and if we're trying to create interaction, it's a little harder to do with microphones that are very focused in just certain areas. Great. All right. Uh, next question. Uh, does Do the Microflex complete pieces connect um, with the standard Microflex system? Ah, uh, unfortunately, these are two different types of systems. In fact, they even operate in two different areas of the frequency band. Uh, so, Microflex, uh, the MXCW, Microflex Complete Wireless, uh, is kind of a system unto itself, as is Microflex Wireless. And I know we didn't do a good job with marketing. It's like there's a C in one of them and not in the other. It's kind of confusing, but that's the way it is, yeah. All right, and then uh, here we go. Uh, just a comment for you. Love the vintage uh, 200 amplifier and mic in your background. Coming through with the quality, quality sure background there. Um, what that amplifier is the, keeps the house held down. It, I think it weighs 329 pounds. <laughs> love it. Um, don't let Michael Pedersen know you have that. He might come and steal it from you. That's our corporate historian who collects all sorts of sure memorabilia for our archives. Um, so there is a question in this, though. What is the pickup pattern difference uh, between the MXA710 two-foot and the MXA710 four-foot? That is a great question. Um, so the two foot version, we'll, we'll get technical here for a second. The two foot version has 50 microphone elements in it. The four foot version has 100 microphone elements in it. And being a linear array means basically those microphones are kind of stacked just side by side through the entire length of that microphone. And, uh, so here's a two foot version here, by the way, just so you know, the size, it's, it's, they're very small, very slim and sleek. Um, and, and that pattern's coming out kind of like a, a slice of, uh, you know, a fan shaped slice here that's perpendicular to wherever the microphone's mounted. So I can control it up and down the length of the microphone, but I, I can't control the width of it here. That's that, that donut shape or that bagel pattern that it's picking up. So if I need to flip it this way, great. Now the pattern goes this way. What's the difference between two foot and four foot? Well, two feet. No, seriously. Uh, it, it, by adding that two feet, we get better pattern control down to lower frequencies. So at two feet, this is directly, rep, um, uh, uh, you can correlate this length of, of uh, array directly to a frequency. And that frequency is about 1200 Hertz, uh, 1.2 uh, Killer. So 
what that means is I have great pattern control to about that frequency. And then the lower in frequency it goes, it starts to become more and more omnidirectional or wide. You get down to like 200 or 100 hertz. This thing is picking up every which direction. Now, the four foot version gives me an octave lower pattern control. So instead of about 1200 hertz, now I can get down to about 600 hertz pattern control, which is really getting into the meat of the vocal range. Uh, more, you know, the, uh, there's some good stuff going on there at 600 hertz as well, not just the intelligibility part up at 1200 hertz. When do you use one over the other? Use the four foot version when you have a very acoustically challenged space. You want that extra pattern control when you have an acoustically challenged space, meaning if it's very reverberant or we need that extra rejection of noise coming from other directions. Uh, and then if you're going to the ceiling and you have a really troubled uh, acoustic space, use the 910. There you go. There you go. Uh, Follow-up question that came in. Um, remind us again, what is the distance range of the 710? So the two foot, first of all, caveat, <laughs> this is Always. kind of a marketing number. Yeah, um, there's a lot of factors that go into to what the real operating range is at your location. And it's all based around acoustics of the space. So with that in mind, we say roughly the two foot version is good to about 16 feet and the four foot version is good to about 20 feet. If you have an anechoic chamber for a classroom, which by the way, we've demoed these, the four foot version in larger spaces and they get clear to the back of the classroom and people are going, oh, my God, that sounds like the best mic I've ever heard. While on the other side, you know, other places you go and, and you get 10 feet away and it just sounds horrible. Acoustics have a lot to do with how microphones sound in spaces. So take those numbers with a grain of salt. Get in touch with your Shure rep or your, your uh, MDEV if you really want to do a demo in your space. You know, if you'd like to get a hold of one of these things and try it out, that's the best way to know if it's going to work for you or not. Awesome. All right. Um, and then it looks like we just have one last question. And believe it or not, it's a question for me. Um, is this webinar being recorded? I would love to share it with my teammates. Yes, this webinar is being recorded. Um, it does take us a little bit of time, about a week or so, to get it edited and up on our website. But once it's ready, um, it will be available at sure.com slash webinars. That's sure.com slash webinars. And we will also send out an email through the go to webinar, the go to webinar interface uh, to all of the registrants. So so we will follow up with that link once it's live. Um, and I think that just about wraps it up. Um, so we want to thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you learned a little something. I know I always do. And we hope to see you on the next one. Have a great day, everybody.